End of the year is usually a period when some new devices arrive, timed to attract the attention of buyers during the Black Friday and the holidays, a time when we tend to spend the most money on tech. The finish of 2020 will surely be quite interesting for gamers, mainly because of the new consoles, but there's some PC gaming related stuff coming too, among which some new monitors equipped with new technologies. It's been two months since our last gaming monitor review, so it was about time to test something new. We finally got the Gigabyte M27Q, a very fresh new monitor that currently sells for around 350 euro in Europe or 360 dollars in US, which puts it in a bracket of affordable gaming monitors. What exactly do you get for that amount? Well, you get 27-inch super speed IPS panel, which we see for the first time on any monitor, WQHD resolution, 170Hz refresh rate, VESA HDR400 certification, along with a few useful features. Quite the set of specs on paper, but let's see how it performs in use. Unlike its Aorus series, which is visually much more extravagant, Gigabyte went for a more modest design on a model under its main brand. M27Q is entirely made of black plastic, which looks plain at first, but a closer look reveals some fine detail, like surfaces with a cast metal texture, smooth and reflexive piano black parts, as well as those covered in a fine triangular texture, which alternate harmoniously and make the monitor look interesting even with no flashy or glowing parts. Thin side and top screen bezels are practically a standard at this point, and the panel itself is coated with an anti-reflexive layer, which is not too aggressive, so it would have a minimal influence on contrast and colors. As a result, reflection rejection is fair, though not the best we've seen. The stand is fairly simple, with an interesting shape and supports height adjustments of 130mm, as well as back and forward tilt, but curiously, no left and right swivel. Those who use the monitor strictly for gaming or working in a fixed position probably won't mind, but if you frequently have a need to rotate the monitor for viewing from a different position, you will probably miss this feature. Sure, the monitor is pretty light, so you can easily pick it up and reposition it, but if you really like this monitor and need this feature, you do have an option of VESA mounting the monitor on one of those aftermarket monitor arm stands. In a standard position on the bottom of the back of the monitor, there is a connection section in which you'll find DisplayPort 1.2, two HDMI 2.0 ports, as well as USB Type-C, which can also be used as a picture source. If this reminds you of some recent models, you're right, since this one also comes with an integrated KVM switch, so you can connect a mouse and a keyboard on a set of USB 3.0 ports on the back of the monitor, and use them on a PC connected to a USB-A or another PC or mobile device connected to USB Type-C, with easy switching between the two via KVM button on the back. This works especially well with Samsung's DeX, giving you an impression of using a desktop PC, plus M27Q also gives you an option of displaying picture-in-picture -picture or by-picture, so you can keep your mobile phone display in the corner of the screen while gaming, to keep an eye on notifications or an important chat. Besides the KVM button, there is a mini joystick for menu control, which is conveniently shaped with a recess in the middle to keep your finger from slipping and offers very efficient control of the monitor, both through a quick menu and a full-featured menu which is simple, with free rows and well-organized options. The USB connection also allows you to control the monitor through OSD Sidekick software, which is a very convenient way to check and change any option, but also lets you map certain functions to a keyboard shortcut save profiles for different eSports users and update firmware, something we rarely see on monitors, which opens up the possibility of Gigabyte fine-tuning the performance or adding some new features. For the hardware enthusiasts among you, there is also a dashboard feature which can display a bunch of CPU and GPU information in the corner of the screen. Advanced gaming features include displaying timer, current refresh rate or FPS, and crosshair, both custom-made one or one of the predefined ones. One of the most interesting aspects of this monitor is certainly its super speed IPS panel, which is definitely not your usual IPS. According to Gigabyte, this panel uses a thinner layer of liquid crystal, which is driven by a higher voltage, resulting in a response time that is four times faster than on a regular IPS. Response time is further improved by 170Hz refresh rate, which in my experience is enough in most cases, since it is not that easy to get over 170 FPS in modern games, so 240Hz monitors often do not reach their full potential. In real use, this certainly is a very fast IPS panel, though we didn't quite get the impression that it has a significant advantage over the fastest IPS panels we saw previously. 
That is, until you activate the AIM stabilizer feature, which is Gigabyte's implementation of backlight strobing, which is when things get interesting. With this option on, the monitor achieves a very fast response time, so in the UFO test we were able to make out fine detail like single pixel sized eyes moving at 960 pixels per second, which indicates a response time fairly close to 1 millisecond. Interesting thing is that backlight strobing usually causes the screen to get much dimmer and often too dim to be usable, but with this monitor that is not the case. From initial 340 nits in one of the display modes, activating this option drops the brightness to 183 nits, which is still sufficiently bright for a good display quality. Another positive surprise is that while the strobing is active, the flicker is not noticeable, which is not the case on most monitors that support this feature and can cause eye strain, but instead we noticed from time to time something like the rainbow effect on DLP projectors. We're not sure whether this is a side effect of a thinner panel or something else, but AIM stabilizer strobing is definitely usable for those who require the fastest response time possible. If instead you wish to use a variable refresh rate, which most users will probably prefer, the response time will be somewhat slower, though you can control it with three levels of overdrive, picture quality, balance and speed, among which we recommend balance as speed can cause a noticeable overshoot with no noticeable response time improvement. Variable refresh rate is supported through AMD FreeSync Premium in the range from 48 to 170 Hz with LFC which makes it work even if the frame rate drops below 48. Even though the monitor is not officially G-Sync compatible, VRR will work just fine with NVIDIA graphics card as well. We also have to commend an input lag of only 8.5 milliseconds, which is in line with the best gaming monitors we've tested so far. As for the image quality, Gigabyte M27Q, thanks to its WQHD resolution, offers an optimal image sharpness for 27 inches, as well as a higher level of detail in games compared to Full HD, so it's probably an optimal choice for a monitor at this moment, as 4K makes not much sense for gaming, unless it's on a much larger screen. Color display is quite intense and saturated, so much so that unlike on most monitors, you may wish to dial it down a bit. Even though it uses a true 8-bit panel with no help from FRC, the monitor is able to display a wide color gamut that covers a measured 92.8% of DCI-P free spectrum. Gigabyte M27Q offers predefined picture modes for FPS and RTS RPG games, movies and reading, plus an sRGB mode which, as expected, offers the most accurate and natural color display with a very good delta E deviation of 2.5, so if you're planning on using this monitor for design or video production, this is the mode to use. Maximum brightness is rated at 400 nits, which is a requirement for getting the basic HDR400 certification this model has. We measured close to 380 nits in the brightest preset mode, with the contrast of 1000 to 1, which is an average figure for an IPS. Besides the faster response time, a thinner layer of crystal in this case has some downsides too. We got the impression that the viewing angles are slightly narrower than what is usual for an IPS, and we also noticed some backlight bleeding in lower left and right corners, also more than is average for an IPS type display. Our testing unit also had a few bright pixels, so if you're interested in this model, we do recommend buying it from sellers that will allow you to send it back in case of a bad panel lottery. Overall, for about €350 Euro or $360, Gigabyte M27Q offers a lot. Fast response time, 170Hz refresh rate, very usable backlight strobing mode, good color display and viewing angles, and KVM capabilities make this model a solid choice for both gaming and work or multimedia viewing. Plus, we have to add, we've tested it on a PlayStation 5, and even though 2.7K is not officially supported, it worked well in 4K mode. It seems that we'll be seeing super speed IPS on other Gigabyte and Aorus models as well, and with different resolutions and refresh rates, so it will be interesting to see where it goes and what are its limits. So, what do you think about this monitor? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you liked this review enough to give us a thumbs up, and maybe consider subscribing to our channel for more tech reviews. You were watching Bench House, my name is Ivan, and I'll see you next time.